like you a say passion. you did it for a year yeah is that right yeah. oh cool. in sydney oh great amazing uh hi gary <laughs> you said yeah bachelor oh, amazing. yeah awesome great i think there might be a bit of a delay so <laughs> <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so cute. laughs> uh, hello i didn't know i was gonna be i didn't know it was a camera thing so that... right well you know the camera's optional but you know it's always nice to see people's faces i might frequently ask for thumbs this is up. true <laughs> uh because silence is strange okay friends um slight recap on what we've been doing uh over the past couple of days so as i mentioned to you over the first couple of days we started right from the beginning clefs treble clef bass clef refer to the treble clef as the g clef bass clef as the f clef uh notes are this continuing cycle of letters a to g and they continue infinitum <laughs> um, as for notes, uh, every good boy deserves fruit for the lines for treble clef and face, F-A-C-E, uh, for the spaces for treble clef and good boys deserve fruit always for the lines for bass clef and all calcite grass for the spaces for um, bass clef. Cue. Um, and I also encourage, if you've got something on hand, if you, anyone has headphones on hand um, with a mic, I'll encourage that. But... Not a huge problem. It's just getting I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Otherwise, maybe switch up the mic. Thank you. <laughs> it's just one of those little things. A lot of people are teaching like this, but they get a lot of feedback and um, kind of just the whole process a bit strange. Uh, all right. And then yesterday we spoke about the major scale, the glorious major scale, uh, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And as we can possibly recall, uh, Sorry, tone. If you can see that, can you see that light up? You can see it, yeah. So the C to D, that's a tone, and C to C sharp is a semitone. Okay, so if I actually play every note next door to each other, each of these are semitones, and if I go C to D, that's a tone. D to E is a tone. E to F is a semitone. F to G tone. G to A tone. A to B tone. B to C semitone. So that's our major scale. Does anyone have any questions about that? No. Nope. Cool. Um, rock stars. <laughs> and I was also outlining the, uh, the scale degrees of the major scale. So every note on the major scale has an associated number. Uh, the first note is at number one. Uh, so it's very logical. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That atrocious vocal warm up that I'm sure you've all done. That does nothing. Uh, <laughs> My little side opinions when you're doing these classes too. And so the um, the relationship between the one and the five is incredibly strong, um, mostly due to the fact that the key signature or the, the major scale for G major has most of the components of C major except for one note that's altered. So the C major, all the white notes, and G major, all the white notes except for the F sharp. If I build, uh, uh, bear with me for two seconds, just need to change one setting. Oh, it's nutrition started a live video. <laughs> Turn notifications off. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so G major. And then I want to start the major scale a fifth up from here, which is D. D major. First four notes are the last four notes of the G major scale. Just like the first four notes of the G major scale are the, are the last four notes of the C major scale. So, C, so D major, one altered note, C sharp. And then I'd build a, a, a fifth from that, D to A, A major. Same notes as the D major scale, except I'm going to sharpen the seventh note. Pretty much you can just keep going around that cycle, and that's what we refer to as the cycle of fifths when we build the major scale uh, continuing clockwise. And the, the way that we want to, if you want to play around with the cycle of fifths, either just look it up on Google to find an image or uh, draw a clock face, and you'll find because there are 12 notes, each each um, angle will uh, 
each sort of marker will be be a note. So the first one being C major, the next one being G major, D major, A major, and they're all a fifth apart. Okay, so they're direct neighbors. Um, cool. Any questions on that? Carrie, with her hair. No, back. sorry, I'm tying my hair back. <laughs> Not yeah, a question. It's so dramatic. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so all I need you to know and recall is um, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Um, it's really important to familiarize yourself with major scale as best as you can, um, especially for vocal teachers who actually want to run uh, run warm ups throughout every scale. Um, one brilliant practice is to just get familiar with just doing the first five notes of each scale, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And then just going up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the little trick that I showed you yesterday was that when we're looking at a key signature, in order to determine what the key signature is, if it's a sharp, we take the last remaining sharp and we raise it by a semitone. So um, we can see here that we've got one sharp, it's an F sharp. All I have to do is lift it by a semitone, G, it's G major. And then the second one, the last remaining sharp from left to right is a C sharp. So I get C sharp, lifted by a semitone, D. So that's D major. And this one here, one, two, three, four, the last sharp is a D sharp. So I got D sharp and then raise it, raise it by a semitone and we got E major. Cool. Um, all right. What I was going to, what I mentioned about flats yesterday, uh, <laughs> Thanks, <Jenny. laughs> I know. I didn't know that either. That's so amazing. It's it's, uh, it's a little trick. I love it. I need to shrink that screen. Shrink the screen. Okay. Um. So for flats, basically all you need to remember is for if it's one flat, it's F major. Okay. Just learn that as rote. That is the rule. One flat F major. Happy days. Um, <laughs> uh, though, any more flats then we can actually determine what the key signature is. So when we're looking at the key signature of a flat, we look for the second last flat in the series. So in this case, there's two flats here. The key signature is going to be a B flat, okay? So the, the second last flat. If I look at this one with three flats, I look for the second last flat from the right, okay? Um, and the second last flat is an E flat. This is E flat major. I'll draw one more. <laughs> <laughs> What? So, that's so much more simpler than having to like circle right? the fifths and stuff. Yes, I know. I I um I kind of I find going through the circle of fifths incredibly tedious. <laughs> I shouldn't say that as a teacher, but it's like I think I just learned I learned the circle of fifths super quickly and just threw it away to be honest. And that's really naughty of me, but I was like I need to understand why this is functional practically. Um, so here we would look at. Hey, Elise. Welcome. Um, <laughs> many voices of Daniela. Good. So, um, second last flat. And those playing at home, what key am I in at the moment? Anyone can shout out. What key signature is this guy? A. A. A flat. Is that Beck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so yeah, uh, second last flat in the series. So if um, if I tagged one more, which would be a G flat, uh, we would then look at this guy here, and then we'd be in D flat major. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is everyone relatively clear on working that out? So like yeah. flats are always like the note flat major. You it's know, note so, flat major. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. So one thing that I encourage when we are talking about notes, uh, even if you're in a vocal call or learning something, uh, get in the habit of saying a flat as opposed to a. Uh, the main misconception is that oh, okay, well they're it's it's an A and an A flat, so they must be similar. Uh, for whatever reason, they are actually completely different. They just they just share they share a commonality, um, which kind of goes back to like medieval times and stuff. But we don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, <laughs> So maybe in another session we'll talk about the history of note names. Uh, but basically, uh, once upon a time, there was C to B or, or A to G. And then some guy was like, hey, let's create some more notes, uh, but we're not going to create new letters for it. We'll just wedge them in between the letters and give them <laughs> the letters plus another symbol. 
That's very, <laughs> that's very layman's term uh, way of explaining it. But uh, they are different though. So, yeah, correct. So it's, uh, as you said, A flat. That is A flat major as opposed to A major. If it was A major, the last sharp would be a G sharp and then we'd raise that by a semitone. Uh, cool. So I'd like to talk about rhythm and note duration today. Um, does anyone have any questions before I move on? No. Cool. Uh, I'm sure you guys will know this. You've all come across this beautiful chart. Those playing at home, I'm using an iPad Pro. It's great. <laughs> I love it. It's my best friend. <laughs> Lonely days. <laughs> all right. Now, here's your rhythm chart. Ooh, what is that? Quavers on the bottom. So watch how lazy I get on the last ones. <laughs> and then I'm not going to draw the rest, but you guys can fill in the rest. It's just basically it does the exact same thing. And then if I really wanted to, I could go even further. And that's, it's very rare you'll see notes like that, but mm, they exist. What are they called, those ones? Where are we at? So if, like we're, at, if we're at the fractions, because uh, there's two different ways, two different conventions of naming the notes. Mm -hmm. So we refer to, we've got the whole note up here and I'll, I'll work down to the, the weird ones. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say weird, they're just different. Uh, they're just <laughs> less common. <laughs> <laughs> Philosophy. <laughs> uh, then we've got uh, half notes. Uh, then we've got quarter notes. We've got eighth notes. We've got sixteenths. And then 30 seconds. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it looked like 30 second death um, <laughs> that's how we feel about it when we see it in music uh, so that's one approach in terms of the, the naming of the note rhythms so um, it's this is most conventional when we're actually looking at time signatures because the, the lower fraction in the time signature is referring to this note value um, so we've got the whole note we split the whole note into two we've got half note so two of these half notes are worth the 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 the, the whole note in in full, and then the half notes split into quarter notes. We've got four quarter notes to a whole note, um, and then the quarter notes split to eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and then thirty second the th notes that are really annoying to say. Okay, so now no 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 the other way of explaining it is and look. It can appear confusing at first, but you kind of just have to accept it, which <laughs> it's kind of just a lot of this, to be honest. Um, the semi-brief, and this is what we're mostly accustomed to. A lot of jazz musicians will actually speak in the fraction term um, rather than the semi-brief terms. Uh, minim, uh, crotchet, quaver, please let me know if you can't read my writing. Uh, semi-quaver, and then semi-demi. <laughs> Demi-demi. Yeah. Oh, man. What is going on with this writing? Dem <laughs> um, <laughs> it actually might be demi-semi, but I, I believe it's semi-demi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll look into that and let you know. Um, so it's actually, in a rehearsal, it's super convenient to be able to say... I want to be able to go from the second minimum of bar 37 or what's the note on the second minimum of bar 37, for example. Uh, you can say the second half note, but I think it's actually more conventional to say what is the, you know, what is that third crotchet in the bar or what is the quaver on the end of four, for example. Um, that's actually more conventional than saying uh, the eighth note, but I think there are just different parties. It really depends on the circumstance. Um, of course, some musical directors will say, let's go from, you know, the fourth quarter note, but I, I think they'll they'll say that more t to musicians than they would performers. Uh, at yeah. least that's my experience. Um, now, 
now, now, now, now, now. Let's have a quick chat about time signatures and then we'll actually start to apply some of this. So, simple and compound time. We got two, four, four, four. Um, I believe six, eight is considered simple time. Compound time is the multiples of three. Um, it's like, I uh, know, oh three, four is still considered a simple time, but 12, eight is considered compound. Uh, nine, eight is considered compound. I, it's probably, it's actually worth doing a little bit more um, research on this, or I might do an, an extra session on this just to get more detailed on it. Um, but when we're looking at a time signature, The top number is referring to the frequency, as, as in the occurrences, as how many times they occur. Um, I actually like to think of it as quantity. And then I like to think of the bottom as quality. So quality being the type of note. And so the bottom number is going to refer to the fractions that I just spoke of a moment ago. So that, that four directly correlates with a quarter note. Um, and this eighth directly related to this eighth note. So it's, it's, it's telling me that for, for the first one, it's telling me that there are four quarter notes per bar. And that's the most common. Um, common time is... Common time is also, when we talk about common time, we're referring to 4-4. Four, four. We're talking about cut common time. We're talking about 2-2. Two, two. Um, most music is in common time, but most, uh, you know, classic kind of Broadway tunes are in cut common. Um, and just to sidetrack for a second, uh, common time can also be written with just a C. And cut common time will have a nice slice through the middle. Okay. Just means that the emphasis of the beats are a little bit different, which I'll get to in just a moment. Um, when we see common time, um, most contemporary music will have 4-4 four, four as opposed to a C. Um, we will expect to see a total of four crotchets per bar, okay? And of course, as we know, those those can be any permutation of rhythm, okay? It can be a quaver, crotchet, and a minim. It can be two minims. And of course, can incorporate the 16th notes across the whole bar. But we want to see a total of four crotchet notes. Um, Knowing, being able to identify the crotchet, being able to identify the time signature and when you're sight singing will be super helpful um, to be able to think forward, um, always thinking ahead when you're looking at the piece of music. Uh, any questions about that so far? So 12 yeah. 8 means that there's yep. eight, there's got to be eight crotchets in a bar? 12 8 notes in a bar. 12 so the 12. Yes, yeah. good. Thanks. Yeah. I'll actually, oh yeah, I'll, I'll touch on that now. Uh, the 12 being the frequency. So you're going to see 12 of them within the bar. Of course, the piece of music may not denote that, um, but the, the eight is going to refer to the type of note, and that's an eighth. So that's where we get into an illusion of fractions. It's got yeah. nothing to do with fractions. but So 12 eight is going to look like this. Most kind of like soul blues tunes will be in 12 eight. So I've got, we haven't really talked about beams and stems and how they join together. Um, but if I didn't join these together, they would just be Quick. times four. Yeah. So, but in, in, for, for neatness's sake, and also to emphasize where the, the strength, where the accent of the rhythm goes, um, the, they join into four groups of three. Okay, so da ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba ba da. Okay, so the str the strength the strength of the beat goes on one two three four. So it's still effectively a four four, but it's got a little bit more of a swing feel. Um, not always a swing feel, but we'll see if we can get into some examples a bit later. But the 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 Western uh, well no I won't go down that way. <laughs> <laughs> the slightly more square way of writing it out would be to and again I'm jumping ahead because we haven't really touched on what triplets are. But I guess we're talking about rhythm now, so I can. That would be another way. So that 
if I was to read both those phrases, it would be effectively the same. Um, but for reasons and for neatness's sake and for the style's sake, um, sometimes it's more appropriate to write it as a 12 8. Now, the triplet, um, let's go into just how we kind of um, split the bar up. So, triplets are generally, they're broke, they're, they're evenly spaced out notes within the beat. Okay, so in order to find, in order to, to really uh, embody kind of how the rhythm goes, we need to have a word to kind of spread it out. And so usually my word that I use to um, subdivide a triplet in, in my mind will either be the word triplet mm. or um, I'll use the beat number that it's on and I'll say one and a. Uh. So when I'm seeing a phrase like this, I'm internalizing either one and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. Okay, so each of the one and a, uh, they are equally spaced apart. Nothing is getting more emphasized. I'm not going one and a, uh, and not sort of swinging it like that, or uh, one and a. Uh. <laughs> I'm going one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. Each of those have equal point in time across the triplet. The mm -hmm. second way of doing it is to just go triplet, 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 triplet. Um, for different reasons, it's just super, I find it's much more conventional just to think about where it occurs in the beat, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. Um, I'm sure you've all come across triplets and probably had to read them and kind of sometimes not known how to approach it because <laughs> they can be very odd to approach. Uh, we don't usually like to evenly space rhythm. We usually like to give emphasis to, <laughs> to certain things. Uh, and when I say we, I'm just talking about society, but I won't talk about society because there's no one talking about <laughs> Yeah, little pearls, little pearls of um, philosophizing. Now, we also have, I'm getting a little bit advanced for a moment. Is everyone okay with me going down this triplet pathway? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I'll yep. go back to semi quavers for a second. Uh, this this Quaracha triplet, the reason I want to bring this out is because you, you will definitely see this within music that you need to learn. Uh, and, and not a lot of people will know how to approach it. Um, the crotchet triplet occurs over two beats. That is to say, just as three, so we call this a quaver triplet. Uh, uh, this is a, bear with me whilst I explain this, uh, a group of three quavers and they're, they're grouped as a triplet. That occurs over the space of one crotchet. So as I'm clapping one crotchet, I want to be able to fit I want to fit three notes within each of those crotchets. Now, when I'm looking at a crotchet triplet, this is where it gets a bit confusing, it's actually taking the space of a minim. So right now, what I've drawn there is a complete bar. That actually spans four beats. And the... If I had to subdivide, because it's always, when I talk about subdividing, it's actually about understanding where the strength of the bar lies internally, so you can feel the pulse internally whilst those rhythms are occurring. Um, I'm going to... The tricky thing with the triplet is that the, 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 the strong beats occur in between the second and the third portion of the triplet. I'm getting... Daniel, does that kind of have a bit of a waltz feel to it? Is that... Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to imagine it in my head. <laughs> yeah, depending on context. And I'll, I'll try to give you an example as well. Um, usually usually you find them if... Um, we all seem to be MT in this group, I believe. <laughs> um, <laughs> you'll generally find them in quite lush ballads or something quite uh, conversational or something you need to communicate something quite passionate. Um, I found that the crotch triplet will be found there uh, as a, the quaver triplet will be actually something that's a bit more recit and uh, that's actually more conversational whereas the crotch triplet is quite broad if we try to if we try to treat it too musically and literally uh as an actor you won't get across the emotional intention of the composer whereas in from my experience the composer is actually intended to say this is actually um these three words are equally important and it is of uh they're actually quite a passion fueled sentence okay so I'm, again i'm speaking about this theoretically and i'll try to bring up an example um coming back to where the emphasis of the beat lies the 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 first the first group of the triplets occurs on beat one and the first note of the second triplet occurs on beat three so that we can be we can be sure of um the 
second and the third occur slightly before and after the second beat. And this is going to be where it's a bit tricky um, communicating sound over the camera because you're going to see a delay. Um, if I'm clapping one, so if I'm counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, one, two, three. So those playing at home, we probably yeah. heard some syncopation, uh, which is to say the emphasis of an accent of beats between the strong beats. Okay. That's a brilliant practice to do. Um, I would start with just quaver triplets. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. And then see if you can go, see if you can get a pulse going. Now, just simply get a metronome app or something that will keep a pulse going. You don't need to internalize the pulse yourself, but something that has a reference. For me, um, I'm quite used to playing these these polyrhythms, um, two rhythms occurring at once that are sort of challenging each other. So my foot is going one, two, two, two. One and a two and a one and a two and a, so I'm I'm evenly spacing out the triplet. Technically, I should be saying one and a three and a because it's occurring on the third beat. Mm -hmm. um, just FYI, those playing at home. Any questions about that? Slightly more advanced concept, I believe. No, I think that's makes sense. So the quaver triplet occurs over one crotchet, and the okay. crotchet triplet occurs over a minute. Over a minimum. Yeah. Rocket. Legend. Cool. Cool. Slightly rarer. You won't always see them, but I think it's nice to actually know how to tackle them. Totally. Um, it just sounds uh, like the just... start of um, America from West Side Story. Where did Dory go? American Pie, American Idiot. <laughs> Am I going to try bother? Actually, you know what? West Side Story would have so many. Um, the tricky thing is, is that in, for West Side Story, they're not always referred to as triplets. They're actually ref they'll they'll actually be notated as uh, the the classic Latin rhythm because in, Lat in Latin rhythm they don't they don't really refer to it as triplets. They actually, and I'm jumping ahead once more because we haven't talked about dotted rhythms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. They're, they're actually there. Ba 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 ba. You could yeah. see that as a triplet, but actually, that's just their standard clave rhythm. This is uh, something that's like inherent in Latin music. Yeah. The tricky thing is when it comes to like studying Afro-Cuban, Latin, Brazilian uh, world music, is that uh, Western, the Western approach is to write it down and to analyze. That is how we approach things, and we we have it, we we want to know how it looks so that we can then give it somewhere or look at it or record it. We want to be able to uh, preserve it in some way in a written form. Um, so that's that's the Western's approach in writing it down. And the tricky thing with write, written music is that we can't get too hung up on how it looks because how it feels is actually completely different from time to time. Um, great pickup, by the way. I reckon there'd be loads of it in this in this music. Of course, Thanks. I'm going to try find it, but it's at the like only because we were doing the show before COVID 19 happened, like the <laughs> very start of America, um, where it's like Rosalia, I think, singing. When does it occur in the show? After Dance of the Gym, you're nearly there. Bam. Ah, there you, no, go. you called it. You called it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what a legend. Ah, cool. So this is great. This is um, the classic, the Latin rhythm in the bass. Dun ging gong, dun ging gong, ging gong, dun ging. Di da da de da da do 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 do. So this beautiful uh, I don't have enough keys to play it. So you've got the, the bass doing that and whatever other instruments are doing that sort of polyrhythm. That's a brilliant, it's fantastic. I mean, that's 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 tension right there, okay? Yes, uh, I'm so proud of myself for picking it. <laughs> You're a legend, it's really wonderful. So crotch and triplets as well as that that classic Latin, that classic Latin rhythm. Um, ooh, and then look at this, minim triplets. Um, Oh. Be da da de da da always da ha, de, da. 
Because the more we try to try to analyze that that minimum triplet, the more computerized it becomes. So <laughs> that's when uh, overall phrasing comes into play, and we go, "What is the actual sentence? What is the feeling? Also, what is the time? Like, how does time move in this scene? Uh, am I phrase it, that, that? I look at a phrase like that, and I, I see slowness. I see this so there's like stasis in time, the sort of um, uh, real emphasis, looking at something slowing down. So as a musical director, I need to sort of think, okay, what are they singing? Where are they? How does that inf how does that influence the phrasing? Um, mm. it's beautiful. It's great. How wonderful. And then of course they've written rhythmically over overgrowing, which to me says that that's a huge distinction between this lyrical triplet phrase. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we're back again. Dun, dun, of course, dun, dun, we see this. Uh, sem we see the semi brief. <laughs> now we've got a rel here, which is to say, um, we're jumping all over the place right now, but we're just about to wrap up. Um, the rel means to slow down. Mm -hmm. As a music director, and if I was working with the vocalist here, I would see the the chord. I see these semi-quaver chords. To me, the, look, the music doesn't say slow down, but I'm getting so much information that the the minimum triplet, uh, the subito forte, which is to say, there's some sort of emphasis here. Um, the the music's not moving, so the 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 emphasis kind of lies in the actor and how we move, okay? There's not to say that we can just stop entirely. Time is always moving, but there is a sense of space here. And if a musical director is sort of not not uh, conscious and sensitive to that, then they'll just plow through the bar. But we get a... And then we're back in. As we've got accents there. Exactly. <laughs> and reld, you know, so it's slowed down and accented. And the music is not accented yeah. at this point. The vocals are accented, which is to say, yeah. hello, look at the text, look at the notes, what are we saying? And then we move to 6 8, but it's also referred to it as 3 4 because it's going to be a polyrhythm. <laughs> So this is beautiful. Um, so we see that the uh, so three groups. So he's written he's written he's written three eight. Uh, sorry, written six eight because the emphasis occurs on one and a two ender or one two three four five six, but then three four because the emphasis occurs on one two three. One, and, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. And that, I mean, that's a beautiful example of uh, uh, this, this music is inherently embedded in the culture. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's there's no question about it. It's just, that, that, that's, that's the, that's the cultural approach, this rhythm. And of course, when we're writing this, we need to be able to write it down and we need to be able to give it to someone. And also he's, this is an effort of him trying to actually, uh, personify the music if that makes sense cool um oh, what a good chat guys that was really very explorative any questions before we wrap up no one's brains exploding <laughs> <laughs> to be honest rhythm a lot to talk about rhythm um and we might spend a bit more time on it tomorrow actually looking at some stuff but um thanks yeah thanks people Thank, Thank you, you. Daniela. Thank you. Shiny faces on this Wednesday afternoon, still by the morning, because <laughs> my sleep routine is who knows what's happening. I feel like the uh, day is going yeah. so slowly as well as this yeah. is a, like yeah. this is forever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I want to do more of these, and I um I'd like to do some more focused approaches to like building chords and and learning more about harmony and getting around the piano and yes. um, just working out yeah. my technology. But I think I've. I think I've got it. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. See ya. How do I get out of this? Wait, how do you, <laughs> you don't. You're stuck. There's no hang up button. I don't know. How to... <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck do I... forever.
close the window, baby. Oh, okay. Several participants have left the meeting. Except Thanks, Danielle. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>